Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. Clair of Assisi, the great confidant and spiritual friend of St. Francis of Assisi, uh, taking Francis's own ideal of, of trying to live in the poverty of Christ and with the complete devotion of such a life to Christ himself, Claire founded a congregation of women dedicated really to prayer. And uh, the poor Claire's as they existed in the church, uh, groups of nuns, enclosed nuns, uh, who basically dedicate their lives to, to the worship of God, uh, who commit themselves to that conforming themselves, I should say, to, to that mystery of Jesus that lives in the church still, uh, of the time when he went out into the desert to be alone or on mountains alone with his father. And I've mentioned this before in previous talks, how, how the monks and the nuns, uh, and when I say nun, I make a distinction between a sister who is enclosed in a convent, dedicating a life of solitude and prayer, as opposed to a, a sister, uh, a religious sister, who, who is... Who are, who are women who are consecrated to God uh, in view of, of apostolic missions or different other uh, activities. Uh, often we use the word nun uh, in all sorts of ways. So, but really, traditionally, a monk and a nun uh, are men and women who have dedicated a life uh, to stability in one place and to, to a life of enclosure and cloister with God uh, that witness to us all that God is enough, that God alone is enough. And so, but anyway, one of the things I want to speak about is from this witness of prayer is to speak about the different ways we, we can come to, to, to be alone with God. Um, and we, so we, therefore we might speak about the different presences of the Lord. And I, and I particularly want to mention this in view, especially of all those who are listening now in Trinidad and Tobago and other parts of the world who, who may not be able to get to Mass or to the sacraments and who are feeling particularly alone, uh, who who feel isolated, who maybe feel let down by their priests or their church leaders. Uh, you know, in this time where where you feel particularly estranged from from the sacramental life, the core life of the church is grace. Um, I want to encourage you and I want to just to, without making excuses for, for anything, but when if you find yourself in this position, uh, not to be discouraged, but but really try to see this as an invitation uh, of, of of something good that the Lord wants to draw out of this mess for you, um, and and it is something that I've heard many people actually, um, it has changed their spiritual lives because they use this time as an opportunity instead of seeing this time only as a crisis as some, or to be cynical and critical about. They, they, they took the opportunity to, to get to know Christ in his other presences. And what do I mean? Is that, first of all, we could speak about the presence of God in everything as creator, in the general presence of God, that God is fully present everywhere. The whole world is, is, is a, a big chapel. Uh, the story of St. Josemaria Scriva was being guided through many chapels in Rome. Finally, at the end, I asked him, you know, Father, which is your favorite chapel? And in keeping with his own commitment to promoting lay spirituality and to the sanctification of the world, he opened a window and point out to, pointed to the world and said, this is my favorite chapel. He meant to, as a reminder that we, all our lives are played out in the world as on an altar as well, that we, the whole world is a chapel and that our lives are uh, an altar, that we offer sacrifice and prayer and adoration to God in all our activities. So is this general presence of God, no matter where we are, whether we're walking in nature and we, we allow nature to, to ascend our minds and hearts to God, to commune with God and to pray with God. We, nature is not God. God. We're not pantheists. We don't believe everything we see is God, but rather we see everything as coming from God and held in, God, held in existence by God and knowing that God permeates everything in his presence. Then we know that there is the other presence given to us of the very life of grace of, in, in baptism, that we are baptized into Jesus Christ and therefore baptized into to God himself um, and into the kingdom of God, this, this life of grace. And, and we know that the Holy Spirit lives in our soul. So, for example, followers of, of St. Saint, Saint Clair, um, while they do adore the Lord in the Eucharist, I'll speak about that shortly, um, they also will find time to pray with him in their cells, their rooms where they find time to be alone with God. And, and we see this especially deeply in the Carmelite tradition and even in the Dominican tradition as we, 
we we search for God in, in study in our cell and and, 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 and and our cells are chapels. Now, anybody can do this. This is the point that this witness is for all of us, especially those who find themselves estranged. You're not cut off from God. You're not cut off from Christ. That use you try and cut out time at home, make an altar and, and commune with God. Do not be estranged from the church. Uh, it is a time to maybe strengthen your faith in the other presences of God, the way, the other ways you meet Jesus and truly believe that Jesus is there uh, in your heart, around you, but, but, but truly present. Today's gospel speaks about Jesus with two or three gathered. So again, come together as your families if you can. Some of you might not have somebody to pray with, so you might call someone, reach out, you know, but two or three gathered. Jesus is also present there. That's another way of the presence of Christ being present. 